Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GAP, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex. Hi, how are you? This is me right here. Yes, your old pal Al. And we'll be here till, uh, let's see, it's going to be uh, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time tonight. It's uh, uh, 10, oh, almost 10.06 here on the East Coast of the United States in the evening. And uh, we have an interview with a friend of ours we'd like to check in with now and then. We do it earlier in the day, so if I'm wearing a different outfit than I'm wearing right now, it's not that I'm the world's greatest quick change artist. Oops, wait a minute, I pushed the wrong button. I always do that. I do that every now and then. I'm getting too old for this game. There with his morning cup of coffee. Me with my morning cup of coffee. It's, yeah, it's Will Durst. Hi, Will. That's me. That's Alex Bennett. It's great to be here. Yeah, how are you today? Uh, it's early. It's tough to tell. Yeah, we had to do this a little earlier because you have to get a haircut, which, by the way, from the looks of it, you desperately need. Yeah, it's not going to get cut that much. I'm going for the, the freaky flag flying look. Yeah, well, yeah, I know you're doing that. You're, you're giving it the, uh, the statesman-like look, the wizened statesman there, look yeah yeah wizened yeah. statesman that's yeah. what i'm going yeah. for yeah uh, and eccentric i noticed by your tweets that you're playing at harvey's in lake tahoe that's a good gig isn't it that is a good gig it's gonna be fun probably my last time there because i was booked by the improv before they were bought by a group called helium and helium has two clubs one in portland one in philadelphia yeah. And now they've expanded their roster by taking over all the casino improvs, of which I think there are three or four. Vegas, uh, South Lake Tahoe, and a couple of Indian casinos in Southern California. So you don't think you'll be working for them again, or are they... You know? No, they're, they're much into the, the younger comic, younger demographic, the TV comic. Although rumors abound, Larry Bubbles Brown told me, so uh, you can take it for it with a grain of salt or a 15-pound uh, a Himalayan salt lake. You can take yeah. it either way. But uh, he said that some of the younger comics were driving the older patrons out of the audience that they were leaving in droves because of uh, language and subject matter. No, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, because you know it's a casino crowd and it's kind of an older crowd, so so I don't know what to expect. I don't know. Well, they're just making they're making decisions based on knowing nothing. They're a corporation. Uh, they bought the place up, and they're they're not. They, were they comedy comedy people to begin with? Uh, these yeah yeah up? yeah yeah. But <laughs> Philadelphia and Portland, so they don't understand the symbiotic relationship between Northern California and Tahoe. Yeah, which exists, which is similar to the relationship between L.A. and Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, Mr. Durst, we have some things to. Oh, which one's that, Eloise? Yeah, that's yeah. the other one. Yeah, yeah. They Just all her head in to find out if you're okay. They, she worries about you. She, you know, she does worry about she, me. She expressed concern about. Did she say I'm looking gaunt or something like that? No, 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 no. She just wanted to check and make sure that you look good. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So she stuck her head. Gee, a lot of stuff's been happening in your bailiwick, which is political comedy. You must have no end of material now. I mean, it just keeps coming every day, every day, every day, every day. Yeah, you know? it's hard for the audience to be able to focus on what I'm talking about because I don't know if it slipped past them. Although I wrote a line about having Kim Kardashian in the White House. And I said it was the largest collection of ass since Jimmy Carter hosted the Upper Michigan Donkey Basketball Champions. <laughs> Which is a little complicated, yeah, but it works yeah, on stage. Yeah, yeah, it's a little complicated. Uh, yeah. uh, but, I mean, it's just getting so... 
God, I mean, I'm beginning to feel we're living in a in a banana republic here, something like that, sure. you know? On martial law soon. I mean, just these pronouncements that I can do no nothing illegal. Apparently I, I mean, he has special powers. I think he was bitten by a radioactive spider. Well, I think he I think he 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 thinks with being president comes immediate respect and immediate authority. And and king like uh, nobody questions anything or off with their head. Yeah, I mean it's getting absolutely, it's getting terrifying. It is. Everybody's getting terrified. You know. Although although, these are just legal maneuvers. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean these are legal maneuvers. Uh, when you go in to a court. You're, you you have to plead either guilty or not guilty. I mean, even people who we've seen on tape hacking people's heads off with a machete, even they go into court pleading not guilty. And that's what his lawyers are saying. Well, he's not guilty because he can do anything he wants because he's president. And hopefully the courts will, you know, shave that off. If they don't, we're in deep doo-doo. Wow. That's a problem. That's a problem. But, I mean, you know, uh, it, it, there, it, it's just that when he says that, you know, I can pardon myself. For, for a crime that I didn't commit. Yeah. <laughs> and when have you ever known Donald Trump to say pardon me? So, <laughs> so. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just this idea of, of what the job is and what it entails and what your authority is, is beyond belief. You know? Uh, yeah, well, you know, that's what uh, some people want. Yeah. Apparently 30% of America likes that yep. sort of thing. Well, I'm, do they really? I mean, do you think there's a point at which even his base is going to find this stuff a bit off-putting? No. Really? No. Are they that stupid? Look at Germany, 30, 30, 33, 1933. Jeez almighty. Well, so what there's, a certain, there's a certain group of people that believes in black and white. And when you give someone power, you give them all power. And they don't mind his agenda, which is, well, you know, well, they scrap they America clean. They seem to have minded uh, Obama having it, having the power. Yeah, that's yeah, a different thing. That, know, was, that wasn't a white guy. He's a Negro. A starter Negro. A, he was only half black. He's yeah. only half black. A starter Negro. Yeah, we're just Afro curious. You know, uh, and and um, it, it, it's amazing to me that uh, um, did you know? Did you see the story recently that uh, Israel was spying on 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 uh, Obama? To try and get dirt on him? Oh, really? Yeah, that's the latest. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, how, how, Obama has. He, a, wasn't, he wasn't pro-Israel enough. Uh, who knows? Or yeah. or they wanted a crowbar to churn him? Yeah, was, yeah. I mean, but it's 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 just you know they've gone a long way from chasing Eichmann. You know, there was, so, uh, <laughs> there was no scandal with Obama. None, zero, zip, not a. Plus, uh, a, a, a really wonderful first family. I mean, nobody realizes how stable that family was and what, what they represented to Americans everywhere. The ideal first family. Well, not to white people. Some not, white people. Some white people. Yeah. I mean, not you know. Some white people. They never got used to it. Yeah. yeah. Like Roseanne Barr, I bet. Well, had a problem. Let's talk about that for a second here. <laughs> Because it Did you ever have her on the air? Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, in fact, uh, I tell the story about how when they she came for the comedy competition in San Francisco, she I was remember. she was sleeping on the floor of the amazing Jonathan's bus or van or whatever, and oh, so really? my friend Gail took her in and said, "Come on, stay with me down in the South Bay. You can't be sleeping on the floor." And she had met this comedian. And her name was Roseanne Barr. And so she brought her by the show. And I, here comes this fat, dorky looking woman, and I can't figure out how is this woman funny? You know, 
So I, but I was very nice to her. I liked her. So I, but I didn't put her on the show. Uh, but I used to take her out, she and Gail, every morning for that week while she was in for, San Francisco because she breakfast. was dead broke, used to buy her breakfast, you know. And uh, she didn't do my show at that point. And then all of a sudden, a year later, I'm watching Carson, and they go, and ladies and gentlemen, Roseanne Barr. And I go, no, really? <laughs> and she comes out and kills. You may remember that set. Yeah. And um, I figured, well, that's the last I'm going to hear from Roseanne. I, she starts the Roseanne TV show. I get a call. Roseanne wants to be on your show. I said, fine, you know. Yeah. So she comes on the show, and I think, was she with Tom at the time? I think so. And uh, she uh, says to me, I wanted to come to your show because you were so good to me. Oh, that's nice. And I figured I would return the favor now that I have a favor to return. Wonderful. You know, so yes, I had Roseanne on. Of course, two, two years later, I, I called down to L.A. to try and get her on the show, and her people said she doesn't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Hollywood does to you. Yeah. But uh, did you know Roseanne at all? Well, I hosted that week that she was in the semifinals. And uh, I ran into her a couple times. Yeah. And that was about it. And then I went down to L.A. to the comedy store to audition for Mitzi. Yeah. And Roseanne, all during my set, Roseanne sat next to Mitzi in the back and talked to her during my entire set. Really? And Mitzi uh, didn't pass me. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what that was about. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. But I have friends who worked for her and wrote for her and loved her, and then she fired them, and then they didn't love her anymore. Yeah. So it's kind of an A B thing, kind yeah. of a bipolar thing. Well, my thing, friend, our friend David Feldman. Uh, oh, yeah. what happened? I don't know. Yeah, no, he he was working there. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, uh, you only saw his back, but there was uh, the daughter gets married. There was an episode where the daughter gets yeah. married, and he plays the priest preacher. Oh. Yeah. So, but it, only his back is seen. But he was in the writers' room. He was in the he was a punch up guy. And uh, in case people don't know what punch-up is, they write the script that isn't funny, then they send it into a room with a bunch of punch-up guys, and they insert jokes here, there, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, a lot of those people who got hired were Tom's hire. And who they truly liked was Tom. And then she, when she dumped Tom, they all went. So, you know. But that what was, season was that? Oh God, that was that was getting towards the end. You know? There's got to be a, a yeah. chronology. And then the John Goodman wanted out of the show, so they killed off the character, and the next season the show tanked. So <laughs> you tell me who the star of the show was. How did she make it? How did she make John Goodman's character come back for the the they, revamp? They they do it by just making a funny remark about it. Like, I thought you were dead or something like that. Well, you know, that was a rumor or something like that. And then they go on with him just being the father. <laughs> They're having these meetings. They're having these meetings. About Are they really? The, Are they thinking about doing the show without her? Without her. With Darlene as the lead character. Okay. Yeah. Darlene or Jack? Uh, because it was it was Sarah, uh, what's her name? Yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. Her name, who... who spearheaded this whole Roseanne re return to begin with. So they figured, hey, well, you know, why didn't she just do the show, right? Why didn't she be the main character? We'll keep we'll get Goodman back. We'll get the whole cast back except for Roseanne. And then they're saying, well, how shall we get rid of Roseanne? And I figured the perfect uh, answer to that. And um, in the last episode, she has a bad knee that needs an operation and they can't get the money for it because they can't afford it. And one thing or another happens is a flood in their basement. They get uh, uh, support from the government. They get some money, you know, to rebuild, as it were. And so since he's a construction guy, he says, I'll rebuild part of it, but then we'll use the rest of the money and get your knee taken care of. And she's going off to the hospital to get her knee fixed. Well, what if that operation went bad? <laughs> right? 
It's the perfect. That's how it's, the last episode. Yes. Ended? Yes. Oh. It's the perfect way out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I think, and I think that show can survive without Roseanne. I mean, she was a good part of it, but it wasn't like every watch, but he watched it every week to see Roseanne. They, they liked the writing was good on the show. I have to admit, I watched the show. It was well written, well performed. The performers are excellent on that show. They don't need Roseanne. They can still do a good show without her. Yeah, but they need that voice. They need that voice as a counterpoint. Yeah, well, they'll so they'd have to bring in a right wing character, you know. Yeah, yeah. Somehow related to to the cast. Uh, I think uh, a seventy uh, eight year old ex talk show host would be a great character <laughs> on that show, and uh, I'd be more than happy to, you know, be a consultant. Uh, so anyway, uh, so uh, but then you know what it migrated to was she got fired, okay, uh, and and then Samantha B. Then Samantha B. Happened, which that one really bothered me. I'll tell you why it bothered me. I, I mean, I I think the Samantha B. Show is mediocre at best, okay, but but uh, I watched the episode, and she never said cunt. Never. She, it, it was it was bleeped, and then I the copy I got had subtitles if I wanted them. So I brought up the subtitles, freeze framed them for my audience so they could see it. And even where she says "cunt," it says "beep." Oh, it doesn't say asterisk it, asterisk. No, no, she never said the word on the air. She knew how about, she, how about, because she knew she bias? couldn't. She knew she couldn't use the word, and that they she would say the word, and the audience would laugh, and then they bleep it out later on, and that's the way it would run. So the intention was never to use that word. Doesn't the show run live? No, it's taped. Yes. Okay, so nobody ever heard the word. No, only it's the like, only the audience and you, a, and you a had, you had to figure out what the word was. Well, a lip reader probably could. So the word is in your head, not her, not her mouth. Right, but you know, she could have said, "I didn't say that." You know, where was she? Show me a tape that where I said that, where it went out over the air. So I mean, I, it's a I, I it, it, no, nobody's bringing that up. The the, the word was never <laughs> broadcast. That's a, that's a whole different. Yeah, yeah, aspect. And that's let's face different. it, I mean, what was wrong with the comment? Ivanka is a cunt. <laughs> feckless. <laughs> I would remove feckless. She's just a cunt. <laughs> yeah, I can't say yeah, it. it well, yes, you yeah. can. I'll tell you because I, I asked uh, uh, Bob uh, Geldof when he was, I was interviewing him once. Yeah, I said, yeah. I, said yeah. I want to talk about the word cunt. And he said, okay. I said, you people over in Britain, you use this term for your mates, for the guys you're hanging out with, right? He says, oh, yeah, we call each other cunts all the time. I said, bloody, bloody, bloody ones. cunts, yeah. And, uh, in fact, I had a promo he made for me saying, I just want to say, Alex, you're a cunt. You know? <laughs> and, and the fact is that word, at least in Britain, is not an admonition towards women. It's just a no. general term, meaning, and it's usually a humorously given it's like term. Like asshole. Yeah, yeah, only, yeah. Only with a yeah. a double back yeah. because so, it can it, it can be irony, whereas asshole yeah. is hardly ever irony. Well, the thing that bothered me was that nobody took Trump or anybody else to task for the fact that the word was never broadcast. Okay. Yeah. How, how do you know that's what you said? Yeah. Secondly, secondly, there's a big difference between what Roseanne did, which was a tweet, which was a political statement that she was making that was off the clock. Okay. And Samantha B, who does a political commentary show and does political comedy, is kind of like uh, uh, trying to compare. If you said something like that in your comedy act, trying to compare that to Roseanne's tweet. The two different things. They weren't in the con. She didn't do it in the context of comedy. You know. So I mean, I think you ha do. Do comedians have a slightly different standard? 
you know, when they're doing their act than, say, someone does when they're off the clock and writes a tweet. Yeah, and also Roseanne uh, uh, was, it's, it's, what she did was so much worse than what, what Samantha did, just in terms of, you know, racism versus sexism. Um, the sexism is, is not even, you know, it's just an insult. It's, yeah. it doesn't, it's, it's, it's like calling somebody an asshole. I hate to belabor this because I belabored this on, on the show we do every night. But the wow. fact is that ABC, I think, reacted harshly too quickly. Okay. In other words, there wasn't the ability to bring her in, say, you want, you know, she, to begin with, she made an apology like five minutes after she posted it. She yeah, she it deleted down, the tweet. And then yeah. she apologized. They could say, okay, well, you apologize for it, but you want, we want you to be more contrite than that. Never again. Never again, and go on the air and make a full-throated apology that you were wrong and that you know why you're wrong, and we'll keep the show on the air. Otherwise, you're out the door. But they didn't do that. And they didn't do that because ABC was thinking about the bottom line. You know, they didn't care about black people. They didn't care about, what was her name, Valerie Jarrett. They didn't care about any of that. All they cared about was the bottom line and how they were going to be perceived as a network and that if they put the show on the next year given that whole flap they would have trouble getting advertisers for it so it was a monetary decision it wasn't because they liked black people and they were upset that she said this about about uh, uh jared you know i mean it, 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 it i think it was hypocritical in that respect would it's I have fired funny. her? I would have never hired her in the first place. It's about money. It's all about money. I mean, you hire somebody, you know what you're getting. It was like no <laughs> surprise, okay? No <laughs> surprise. No, uh, they had worked with her before. You know, Although, I, I'm sure, you know, the front office had, had changed hands three times well, since then. Well, more than that, though, you know her history. You've seen her tweets. You know what she's capable of, and you hire her? Are you out of your fucking mind? Right? Uh, so uh, that being the case. She ran for president under the Green Party. <laughs> yes, right, right. And then she went to her macadamia nut farm in Hawaii and we thought we'd never hear from her again. <laughs> and then all of a sudden ABC says, we're gonna do this Roseanne show. Welcome to the Roseanne show. And uh, you go, oh, wait a minute, this, they're doing this again? Really? For real? Yes, they were, and that was that was the situation, you know. And it it, it um, so I mean it, so uh, surprise, cal surprise, cal surprise, as they say in France. You're so surprised that she did that. So I just I think they reacted out of their monetary considerations, not because they were upset that black people were offended. And they jump started it. I mean, uh, yeah. it happened so quick. It was it it was kind of weird. Now, on, on her side, screw her. You know, she not for a moment thought about the 250 people that were going to be out of work. And a lot wow. of those people, when this show was suddenly hit, decided to go out and buy a house. You know? <laughs> really? I'm serious. Uh, they were talking about people on the crew who were, like, you know, buying cars or doing something because they knew they were going to have a job for at least one more season, if not an unbelievable amount of seasons. And... Um, uh, she didn't think about those people. They weren't even in her in her wheelhouse. So fuck her. I mean, on that in that respect, something happens to you when you don't take the bus for twenty five years. You know, I mean, when when you when you have to take a public bus, yeah, and and you realize that you got to get along with people that you wouldn't invite to uh, your your uh, house party. You know. Yeah. To your birthday party, but you still got to get along with people like that. And well, some some happens to you just by getting isolated and and protected and buffered and stuff. No, well, I gotta and, tell you, that, and and yeah. it's just because you don't have to worry about how other people are getting by or, and yeah, something when, happens. To when you. I was out of work for a, quite a bit of time, 
and thought I'd never be working in this business again. And then I did get some work and came back. I didn't come back the same prick I was when I left. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean. Uh, you came it, back chastened. It changed. But I will tell you something that when I had a crew, and I only had a crew of like 10 people who were doing my show in the morning, every month I felt the pressure to keep those ratings, not for me, but so they keep having a job. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you take that into consideration. I was still a prick at the time, but you know, all I'm saying is you, you become a little more humbled by realizing that fate is fleeting, fame is fleeting. And, and hey, how many, how many, how many, how many uh, people watch this thing? Oh, I don't know, a couple of hundred maybe, not a lot, not a lot. Are any of them in New York? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um. Because I'm doing my I'm doing my little one man show in New York in November. Oh well, we'll have to plug it like crazy. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it'll if how much it'll help. Hey, uh, every little bit helps. Uh, but it's if, only a seventy two. If, if, if you need theater. if you need a place to stay, we do have a guest room here. I appreciate it. I think the producer is working on that though. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll be glad. To, I'll be glad to charge him for the room. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, but just know that anytime you're in New York, if you need a, a guest room, um, man, I'm I'm doing my. Uh, I just did the punchline last week, and uh, uh, I think it might might be my last week at the punchline, and this might be my last week what? Why at you, Harvey's. Why are you saying that the last week at the punchline? Because I'm 66. I mean, people don't want to see. Uh, people, I'm not famous. You know, if I were famous and 66, I could keep working. But people don't want to see an old fart. Although, I did make them laugh. I, and I did all politics. And they all laughed. Yeah, but let me tell you something else. I just thought about this the other day. When's the last time you saw Louis Black? I, I, he's touring. He, is, he, is he touring? He works he works here all the time. Oh, okay, this is one of his one of his golden yeah. landings. Because spots. I don't see him having specials anymore on Netflix. You know, I don't see any of that stuff. Oh, he's just, four years older than me. Yes. Yeah, so I was wondering if age is holding him back a little bit, at least career wise. You know. Uh, no, I mean he's he. They have this new theater in Napa called the Uptown. Mm -hmm. It's refurbished. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. gorgeous. It's about seven fifty. Yeah, and that's where everybody it used to be the Napa Valley Opera House. No, everybody, all the big acts are going there, and he's there twice a year. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad because I love I, I love Lewis. He's a nice man, and he's a, a, a very funny comic. Very. Funny. Lewis one time uh, was doing a book reading out here. And uh, he was touring in a bus, and it was somewhere in Marin. I think it was might have been at Marin College. Yeah. And uh, they wanted me to introduce him, and you know, no money or anything. Yeah, yeah, it's a book thing. Yeah. So I get there early, and I, I knock on the, the door of his bus, and some guy comes out, and he's the tour manager or something. I said, hi, I'm a friend of Lewis's, and uh, I just wanted to say hi before the show. He, he said, uh, oh, I'll tell him you stopped by. Well, can I, can I see him or, you know, say, oh, no, he's he's taking a nap before his show. So he wouldn't let me. Oh, I was pissed. Oh. I was pissed. I'm, I'm here. Well, I'm, to show you. I'm, to show, show I'm you doing how... this for free for him, and he won't even come out. And shake my fucking hand and say thank you. Still pissed. But I blame it on his people, not on him. You know, they probably never even told me you were outside. You know, I don't care. Yeah. You hire your people. Yeah, well, your people it, you're reflect right. you. Right. But uh, 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 Lewis, when I, I, I the first time I interviewed him here in New York, uh, to show you how many people went through my doors in San Francisco, says, you know, I was on your show in San Francisco years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He said, that's before I was shouting. He said, somebody, <laughs> somebody told me to start shouting, and then I, all of a sudden I became a hit. <laughs> yeah, well, he, uh, he was managed, I forget who he was managed by, but uh, at Summerfest in Milwaukee, Debbie, Deb and Mike and I would go and do the comedy stage every year. Yeah. And 
because I'm from Milwaukee and I had a little right. bit of a draw. And uh, he, because they, the, his management company had a big, big act, some, some real, they traded their big act if they would hire Lewis. And so Lewis ended up, M, was he the MC or the middle act? I can't remember. The MC. And he was the, and we never had an MC. So it was weird. So it was kind of stuck onto the end. And and uh, it was an outdoor crowd, and we had worked it for years, and we were also we were yeah. kind of conversant yeah. with the rhythm, and he had no idea, and he went out a little harsh, and you know it's like when the MC is a little harsh because yeah. they're the first thing you see, you right. know exactly. So yeah, and then he he kept getting more and more famous, and they kept bringing him back and bringing him back, and then finally he did he did the paid stage, you know the big headliner stage yeah. it was. Seeing him just keep going higher and higher and higher. Wow. Hey, Liz, I just looked at the clock. You know, we're, we've gone longer than we usually go here. And I know you're off to get that haircut now. <coughs> yep. I, I arranged the haircut hundreds of years ago. So Hundreds of years ago when it first started growing. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, he always comes to see us about once every three weeks. And I look forward to every minute of it. Will Durst. Thank you, Will. See you, buddy. You take care. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that's our old friend, Will Durst. Thank you so much, Will, for having joined us and uh, spending time with us. And, uh, yeah, it's good. I like him. I like him a lot. I hope you do, too. Let me see here. Let me, uh, let me, uh, yeah, let me open up. What happened there? Let me open up the, uh, the uh, lines here for the, uh, for the citizen panel. If you want to call, uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, because if you don't want to, it just means I can go to bed early. I got to take a vacation soon. By the way, the lines are open for those who normally call us. Um, I, uh, I got to take a vacation soon. Uh, girlfriend and I have decided we haven't been anywhere since we, <laughs> since we got married. Uh, and we really haven't gone anywhere. Partially, I guess, because I, I uh, you know, uh, haven't been working for the past almost five years. And um, so can we afford it, you know, at which... Now I'm beginning to realize that getting to be the age I am and the money I still have left, I can spend some of it. So we're going to take a vacation. We're thinking of going to maybe to Spain. I don't know. We haven't figured it out exactly. And um, uh, so what I'm going to have to do is I am going to have to uh, take a couple of weeks off here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's up to... Uh, up to you guys to fend for yourself because I finally decided it's time for me to say, fuck you, I'm taking a vacation. Right? Right! Scott Boddicker. Hi, Scotland. I just got back from vacation. Where were you? I was in the cornfields. The, oh, Kansas? Iowa. Iowa. Okay, well, they're, they're cornfields in Kansas too, right? No, wheat. Wheaton, oh, Wheaton, Kansas? Wheaton, Kansas. Wheaton, Kansas. Okay. Come on, man. So you consider Iowa a vacation? Uh, define vacation. Well, uh, I'll define Iowa. I went through it once, and it was late at night, and we were looking for a place to stay, and we wound up in Cedar Rapids. Right? That's the second largest city, yes. Yeah, and we didn't want to stay there, so we just kept driving. <laughs> So that that's that's my, uh, yeah. you know. My, Which way were you going? East to west? Uh, west we're east? we're going uh, east to uh, east to west. Yeah. East to west. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's. I'll tell you when you're driving. Hi, Rob. Uh, when hey. you when you're yeah. driving across the country, things are going pretty good. You see mountains. You see rivers. You see things like that. And then all of a sudden, you hit these states that seem to go on forever, like it's Kansas, and then it's what, after Kansas? Uh, it, Which way? Going west? Going west, yeah. I think it's like Colorado, maybe? Colorado. Well, anyway, it, there's a whole long stretch there where it just seems interminable with nothing to stop and see. Yeah. 
right? Well, you go to the I states. Uh, you got Indiana, yeah. Illinois, yeah. and Iowa. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's and what then happened. Idaho, Idaho's a, a lone wolf. Idaho? Idaho's a off. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I think uh, Melania first introduced herself to uh, Donald. Uh, I, I, I'm a hoe? Idaho. Idaho. I, anyway. Hi, yeah. everybody. Hello, uh, uh, Rob. I was just thinking about you. Uh, I, I don't know why. I was just thinking about you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I've been, it's been a busy summer. Really? Yeah, it just has. It's in what, in what respect? Well, we like I said, we have all these new neighbors, and there's always events planned that go late, and uh, and then there's work, which sometimes when I'm exhausted, it's like you know, so I'm in bed. Who but I mean, it just between work and the new house and all the stuff, it's just yeah. been busy summer. Well, it's kind of like uh, you know, I mean, when you're tired and you've worked a long day, the last thing you want to do is talk to a uh, you know a, a washed up talk show host. So you know. <laughs> It's just, it, it. sometimes you're like, oh, I just have no energy. I've been talking all day. Yeah. Because you know, that's what I do for a living, right? Yeah, right, right. It's kind of like, it, it, I wonder what a, I guess, I wonder what certain, like, you, you, sometimes people used to say to me, Alex, why are you so quiet, you know? You're on the radio, we hear you all the time, and you talk constantly, why are you so quiet? And I go, well, you know, when a hooker goes home, I don't think she necessarily wants to fuck, you know? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I hate to be that hooker's boyfriend. I guess that's why they have pimps. The guys are making money off them and they can live with it, you know. <laughs> but anyway. So uh, 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 what's new with you, uh, uh, Jeff? Well, you, you were just starting to talk about vacations. and uh, Yeah. I, I think it's uh, my wife and I decided that that before we die before we I'm, die I'm that's what you think about as you get older before we food. die yeah before we die. And, and i gotta say that because i lost two brother-in-laws this this year and a oh, half God. or so yeah. so because of that you know and they were the healthy wait a minute wait a minute you <laughs> lost wait a minute let me figure this out you lost two brother-in-laws then oh then your wife had two brothers no wait a minute. no i no, wait, Actually, a, bro a, bro a brother in law is your is my my, my sister's husband. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And my wife's sister's husband. Oh, I see. Okay. Because okay. I don't uh I, I, I don't have any relatives and neither does girlfriends. Yeah. So I do brother in law kinda confuses me when people say it. You know, what's a brother in law? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we decided that yeah. that you know we really have a good vacation, and we we go on vacations often, so we're pretty happy about doing that. But we said, you know what, we're going to take all the grandkids and their parents, <laughs> okay, and uh, go to Italy. Nice this, this summer. Can I go? Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Just let me know where you're going to be. You know. So, uh, it's just mouth to feed. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's another one, you know, another one we would hardly notice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just that I keep thinking, about, oh, how can I take a vacation? I get this to do every night, you know. And I finally figured, fuck it. It'll just be nothing on for two weeks. Fuck you, yeah. you know. You got to do it. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, mentally, it's, it's just so important. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. Uh, but, and you get change. You know, if Jack wants to do the two hours, he can do it. I don't care. Oh. Where, you know, somebody has to like run the uh, uh, the server here. But if I'm not here and it goes down and nobody can figure out out there who how to fix it, then let it be off for two weeks. You know, <laughs> I just, I just, I've just gotten to that point. You know, where I'm saying, hey, you know, I'm just too wedded to this thing. You know, where I just can't go anywhere or do anything. Yeah. You got to enjoy life. Yeah, yeah. You got to enjoy life. You yeah. got to do what it what you know. To sit home and do this is, is nuts. If if uh, if it goes down, it goes down. You don't have to worry. No one's going to upload programs. It doesn't matter. They could do their live shows and 
log on, log off, and be done with it. Yeah, right. You know, I was, uh, I, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I, you know, and I, if I come back and nothing's been running for a week and a half, well, so be it. You know, uh, I, the twenty four seven thing. You know, we don't have a huge audience for that. Because they can get it in so many other places, you know. They can go directly to Facebook or to, to the GabNet page and go to the on-demand, hear anything they want to. Why do they have to listen to a 24-7, um, you know, uh, cycle uh, waiting to say, oh, well, you know, right after uh, the exchange is over, Alex comes on. No, you can just go and click Alex somewhere, so, you know, or the exchange or whatever. So, or even connections. Anybody listen to that? Uh, no? Oh, okay. It's, it's our overnight programming. Nobody ever listens to overnight programming. Hey, Sally, can, can you tell how much they uh, get viewed? Can you listen? Monitor yeah, that? yeah. Oh, you can? Okay. I just didn't know yeah. if they get downloaded a lot or not. Uh, well, that, I don't put them on the on demand. So I don't, oh. I don't have, know how much they get, they get downloaded. I stopped doing that because we don't really own that show. And it's a lot of work to post yet another show. I was posting five shows a night sometimes, six with the, the, you know, with the arena and stuff like that. And I finally said, ah, I'm not going to post them anymore. They've got, they, you know, it, it, they run on the stream, and that, that's, that's good enough, you know. I did their show last night. Huh? And uh, it was about music. And um, tell you the truth, they kept talking over the songs, uh, Everything it was um, uh, it was more organized than Amy and Jack show, but it was still uh, a lot of uh, uh, banter. Yeah, well, they, the reason they talk over the music is they don't, I think, have a license to play the music. So if they talk over it about it, then that is fair usage. I thought uh, they were on a radio station. Did that did that end? They are, but I don't know if, if they have a license through that radio. I, I have no idea, to tell you the truth. I, I, I just told them I don't, I don't want, the, unless they have the licensing, I don't want them to play music. And if they play it, it can only be like, you know, a certain amount, and it has to, you have to be talking about it. So I guess that's what they're doing. I don't know. I can't say that I stay up that late to listen to the whole thing. I hear them every now and then. They sound entertaining. You know, they're nice enough people. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, it's something that we started here and it's got, it's been on almost what, three years now or two years, something like that. All so. time. Started out as the sexy, whatever, yeah, whatever living sexy. Was. Yeah. Getting sexy. What was it? Living sexy, living sexy, getting sexy. Yeah. And then it became connections and, uh, you know, I, I, it's a good show. If you have, you know, if you have nothing else to do, put it on, listen to it. You know, Hey, um, uh, you know, I, I thought of something. Uh, let, me, let me let me get my face my my picture out of your picture, Phil, because I. Uh, you're talking to Will Durst. Yeah. And your topic of conversation was the Roseanne show, mm -hmm. and you keep saying it's it's about the money, it's about the money, and you know what I'm thinking is they're they're in what hiatus right now. And, well, they're, uh, no, they, they're they not in say, hiatus. They've been canceled. canceled. But well, I, they, they're, they say they've been canceled. But basically, everybody is talking about this. How much you want to bet this is a publicity stunt, and they're going to be right back with no. Roseanne next season. She'll oh, make oh, her it, apology. Oh, no, she won't be back. Time no, will no, go by. No, that's not going to happen. That's not, not going to happen. It'll be much to do about nothing. Not going to happen. Well, it, you know, you also said the same thing about... Uh, uh, Singapore and Trump. So uh, 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 all I'm saying to you is not going to happen. Okay. Uh, okay I, we'll I, I wish I wish I could say you're right, but you're not. So uh, yeah. I I still don't believe Singapore is going to happen. Me too. <laughs> There's plenty of time for that to go away yep. again. Well, you know, I mean, the president has has kind of lowered expectations every time he's talked about it lately so we don't know but uh um uh no I, I i don't think uh i i really i think the the thing about roseanne coming back uh they don't really need her if they've got the same writers and they've got basically the same cast 
You've just gotten rid of one character. That's it. And and she was not the show. Uh, nobody said, I got to tune in that show because I think Roseanne's terrific. They liked well, the show. Yeah, I I think that uh, I'll, what's going to happen. I'll, I'll bet is, you. Gonna, no, here's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to find a way to say what happened to Roseanne, and somebody suggested here, and I've been suggesting it to everybody else that she was going into the hospital for a knee operation in the last episode. Well, she went in for the knee operation and something went wrong. That's right. Okay, and now it's Darlene and the kids and John Goodman as the widowed father and uh, the same writers writing the same comedy and the same homespun middle America uh, lower class uh, family. And okay. you can call it Sans Roseanne. No, they're, they're going to call. They're gonna, they, already they say it's going to be called Darlene. Family. It's going to be called Dar Darlene. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 they were going to call uh, Welcome Back Co uh, Cotter. And, 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 and one of the reasons is is that what's her name who plays Darlene was the really the 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 uh, push behind getting this Roseanne on the air. Yeah, and she's already on ABC yeah. during the day on the talk. No, 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 no. She's over at CBS. Oh, that's CBS? Mm-hmm. You ABC. mean the... Um, um, Julie Chen. Yeah, the talk or something it's called. The talk. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, it, it's... Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 I think they'll bring it back. I think it'll... And I think it will get good ratings. I think that uh, people... If, if you have the same writing and, and you have the same actors then I think that thing has every chance of being as big a hit as Roseanne was. I might yeah. watch it then. Yeah. If she's not on it. Yeah, a lot of people I, I would. I watch after the first episode. I tried. Yeah, I'll tell you, though, I watched every episode. Uh, I and, uh, and I watched every episode because I said, you know, this first episode so well written. I want to see what the second one's like. And by the time I kept going, I went, you know, this is just well written. I, you know, I, I want to hate it. There's everything in me that says hate it, but I can't hate it. And you're absolutely right. I think they get rid of Roseanne, they might actually get more people. They're not going to lose the people they already had, and they may get more people who stayed away because it was Roseanne. Do you think they'll cancel the, with her being ostracized, do you think you'll see the end of the old Roseanne show and syndication? Does that go the way of the Cosby? Uh, it's gone already. They'll bring it back. Well, you, it was temporary. No, you say they'll bring it back, but they don't. You know why? why they pay money for those things. They they don't get them that big a rating. Uh, why should they care? You know, I was watching a great movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, called "A Face in the Crowd," with Andy Griffith playing a, a television personality known as Lonesome Rhodes. Yes, I've seen that. People would be very surprised if they saw this picture because it is the he plays the antithesis of Andy Taylor. Okay, he is about the meanest, nastiest asshole fucker mother, and it's all about this guy. She bails out of jail and he puts her. She puts him on her radio a radio station, and he has this very natural quality that people are drawn to. And he becomes uh, he he becomes a big star in that little city. So then the big city hears about him, and they have him go there, and he goes there, and he gets even bigger. And then he gets so big that you know he's being courted by senators who want to be president, and promising to put him in the cabin. I mean, it, it, he just becomes huge, and he, the ego, of course, goes with it. And he's always been an asshole, but this makes him a bigger asshole, and. Uh, is that your description of uh, you in Life in the Passing Lane? No, no, no. no, no. It's more no, like it, Trump. No, no. It, it is. It is a picture that I just watched again, and after all these years, it was made in the fifties. After all these years, it's still relevant. Wow. You know, sometimes you go back and you see old movies you really liked, and you go, "Boy, the acting was terrible in that thing." And oh boy, what were they thinking? This based is so crowd, relevant, right? it, and it is, it is so based, it is so relevant to things that are going on today and about the use of media to make people popular and the kind of power they can gain as a result of that. And at the end of it, Walter Matthau, who this was like almost his first picture, who plays a, a, a guy who was writing, working as a writer for him, 
he's finally yelling and screaming, you know, uh, you know what's going to, you know what's going to happen to me. I'm going to, I'm going to get him back again. I'm going to get these people because he, he says some stuff on his show that uh, turns the whole audience off. He, they leave the mic on because they hate him so much while he's waving goodbye to the audience. He's going, goodbye, you, you, uh, you l lousy, horrible <laughs> people, you know, who will watch this kind of stuff. And uh, um, the bottom just falls out. And so uh, they, he's walking towards the door, and Mathau turns back and says, yeah, I know what's going to happen to you. He says, uh, you're going to go away for maybe a year and let this thing cool down, and then, then you'll come back, and they'll put give you another show. Maybe it won't have the same budget. Maybe it won't be in the t same time frame, and you know. And uh, you know, you'll keep doing that show, but it won't be that popular. Not as popular as your show used to be. And then one day, people are gonna say, "Who was that guy? Remember, he was so big, <laughs> uh, lonesome somebody." And uh, he says, "Yeah." He'll be back, but it ain't going to be the same. And then he turns around and walks out. And, you know, at the bottom uh, of the floor, he's screaming out the door. And Mathau just says to her, you know, he had us all fooled. But, you know, eventually we all get wise. And it's a great picture. And if you ever have a chance to see it, it's so relevant to, what, to what's going on today, you know. Which brings me around to what I've been thinking and I mentioned it briefly kind of as a joke to, to Will. And that is, I finally realize we've turned into a banana republic. I've heard somebody say that. I think that was me. Yeah, you, I heard you say yeah. Then Maybe it was you, yeah. 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 I've heard uh, that. Uh, uh, you know, we t we're turning in, we have turned into a banana republic. I mean, this is the kind of thing we expect out of dictators in South America. Right? This kind of talk about I can do anything I want to and I can't be sued and I can't, I could, I could kill somebody on Madison Avenue and uh, nobody would uh, bat an eyelash. You know, I, I can't get, I can't be prosecuted for anything. I can pardon myself. I can pardon myself, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and uh, pardon me, pardon yourself. Uh, you know, it just, it, it, it's scary. It's finally getting fucking scary. Yes, mm -hmm. Jeff. I don't think it's just that Trump does it. I think the, the real scary part is that there's so many people, and I don't know what that is, 20% or 40% or whatever, believe in that stuff, that they buy into that. That when he says, I can kill people on Manhattan, on whatever he said, Fifth Avenue, and nobody's going to do anything about it. And a, and a lot of people says, yeah, that's great. That's good. Yeah, I know that's true. You know something, though? He's one tweet away from being Roseanne. Nah. No, he's one tweet away from losing everybody. You from doing that it? one thing that just what so... Huh? What could it be? Uh, who, knows? who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But if he doesn't stop, it, it you know, chances are good. Something horrible is going to happen. He's going to say something so inappropriate. How you know, about I bang Ivanka? Uh, well, that yeah. Uh, I, no, we, we you know we know he lies a lot, but we certainly wouldn't believe that. You know, you know the problem is everything that could uh, make his base hate him. It's going to take too long, right? He's not doing anything for his base. He's not giving them jobs. There's nothing. It, 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 they're not. It, you know, it's it's not. It's all smoke and mirrors. So, um, eventually, it'll come to roost. Inflation's going to go through the roof. We're all going to oh, be. Yeah. You know, where you know by the time this all happens, they'll be gone. Hey, you know what I? How I judge uh, um, um, the economy by the price of steak. Have you seen the price of meat lately in the supermarket? No. It's outrageous. Yeah. You know, I go to Costco where meat you used to get meat for a reasonable price. You know, I I didn't look through through the meat and find anything under like thirty seven dollars a package. Wow. It's cheap in Texas. You ought to come on down. Yeah, yeah, but man, it is expensive here. 
And I don't know why. It could have something to do with maybe wheat or something like that, you know. Corn! Corn, you know. Who knows? Cows don't eat wheat. Fine, kosher food. What do I know about what cows do and don't do? You know you can look out your window. <laughs> Free feed. No wonder it's so expensive. You're feeding wheat to your cows. <laughs> Oh, rice, <laughs> rice to the, to the cow. Rice. <laughs> well, I, I was going to tell you, yeah. my, my wife uh, was in Norway this week and uh, on a vacation with her sister. Yeah. And they were, they were on a little, uh, uh, on a ship. Yeah. And uh, there was all kinds of people there from France and, and England and, and, I don't know, maybe Italy, whatever. <laughs> And all of a sudden, when they understand that they're from, that they're talking to Americans, oh boy, ooh, they're like, "What's the matter with you people? Why are you? Just, I guess we can't talk to you because you love Trump, right?" <laughs> and my, my wife goes, "No, yeah. I'd like to kill a son of a bitch." Wow. And they they couldn't believe that. That most Americans think Trump is the greatest guy in the world. Wow! And and it's it's funny we have a different perspective by European people. I I well uh, well she went to she she went to Norway was it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and which is not really Europe. Um, you know. No, but all of the people on the ship were from. France and, and Italy and uh, Spain and, and England. Years ago, I was interviewing Stephen Fry, who's a British com actor, comedian, very funny man, uh, very erudite. Uh, and um, it, Bush was president at the time. It was his first term. And uh, uh, Stephen Fry said to me, he said, well, he said, you know, we don't blame you for Bush being president because of what went on in Florida and all of that. He said, but if you reelect him, we will. <laughs> and sure enough, we reelected him. Well, what can he be thinking now that we, you know, that we have Trump? He's got, he's got to think like every other European that we're a bunch of fucking morons over here. You know, Phil hasn't reacted to any of this. What's his problem? I think he has his earplugs uh, off. No, he's I have I have um, something's going on. There's uh, something in, in the background of this. I don't. It's not broadcasting through, but there's a hiss. Well, so well, why don't uh, you figure it out I, later? Well, I, I had been listening to it, and I thought that you were all full of shit, and it really wasn't worth well, my uh, effort. Well, that that that's that, the, yeah, we're all full of shit. You know, I I, it was just a bunch of anti. I I see Trump doing shit every day. Good stuff. And what? so does a lot do you of see? What do you see him doing good? One thing. It, you know, if one I. Thing. If, one uh, thing. Tell uh, me. <laughs> if if I if I told you, you'd say bullshit. You'd say, oh, it's not bullshit. true. Tell no. me one good thing he's done. Well, I think that it, I think it's good that he's sending back uh, that three times the amount of people that are illegal aliens are being sent back. Uh, yeah, but not all of them are being sent back. We're, we're, we've kidnapped their children. Six down, six down, we've no, kidnapped actually, their children. Listen, Obama please. sent back more illegal aliens than any other president before him. You know, they any used... Any other president. Well, well how Obama do you answer that one, they, Phil? They used a picture of, uh, a during, that was taken during the Obama administration of some kids being uh, in cages... Uh, being held. No, they, uh, I saw those pictures, Obama's Phil. They were they weren't kids. They were adults. They, no, they, were they, kids. They, they they were children. They were they adults. Were they were adults. I saw and the it, pictures, Phil. They were adults. Uh, okay, Bill's whatever right. you want. Right. Uh, I am right. But the thing is, uh, <laughs> you know, they twist what he's doing. It wouldn't matter if he was the second coming of Christ. Uh, you guys would say you that still he haven't named up. one good thing he's done. I haven't heard it. Give me an What, option. Is, it? what is it? Let me unplug Tell this. Me. Uh, you, 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 okay. Uh, uh, I'll just use this. Don't look it up. Don't look uh, it up. Tell uh, me what And uh, uh, please, please, Phil, answer that question before, okay, before Scott has a permanent falsetto voice, okay? 
uh, as far as now, you have to look at it from my perspective, and from my perspective. Oh, well, that's like easy the then. Answer. I looked. I I like the. One good thing you said. I'm giving you the fucking good I, thing. I've heard you say one good thing he's done. Because you won't shut your trap long enough. You're not enough saying it. I gave you plenty of time. You gotta look at it from my perspective. One yeah, thing. My perspective. One good thing. He appointed uh, uh, Supreme Court justices and uh, and appellate court justices that are more conservative. Uh, one Supreme Court no, justice. Many, no, many. no, one Supreme Court justice. Yeah, and another one coming up pretty soon, and maybe two more. So, uh, but uh, he's appointed tons of judges. Well, good for and, you. No, we don't think that's good. He has not appointed I, any I of said, them. It's 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 the other it. guy doing it. Shut up a minute. If the, the crazy guy, that the, the, the turtle, the turtle's doing it. Trump didn't do a damn it, thing. If you got to look, didn't do it. Trump didn't do it. One good thing Trump has done. If you look Come at on. it, my Today. perspective, Today. that's Today. a good thing. I can't hear it. I, if you look at it from <laughs> my my perspective, it's a good thing. Oh, you know what it is? It's the my reverb line. Uh, okay. Because I, I, I put that up, and it uh, gave me feedback. What do you need reverb for? I don't. <laughs> uh, I'm going to mute it so that it doesn't uh, doesn't interfere. Maybe this machine's breaking down. Uh, I, I believe that a number of the things that he's doing, the uh, things that he's signed, the rollbacks for, uh, that uh, of Obama. Now, you guys like that stuff. But as I said, if from my perspective, what, I don't like what that. What did he roll Phil, back? One Phil, good thing. Phil. What did he roll back? You don't, you can't even tell me what he's done. So, Phil, a couple of uh, Supre a, a Supreme Court just justice, uh, the conservative things he's rolling back. You don't have any problem with him saying he's going to pardon himself in case he's uh, impeached. Well, you that's don't a good problem. thing. That is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because then he has to admit he was guilty of something. That's he did you if you read his tweet, it said I don't have to pardon myself because I'm not guilty of anything. But, but, but thinking about it. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me let me interject why something he here as it? as the host of this program. Uh uh why was that whole subject even thought about, either on his part or Rudy Giuliani? Exactly. Because he's guilty. He's thinking about it. Uh, uh you 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 know, you just another another never Trump. Do you remember? Do you, by the way, do you remember when uh, when Rudy Giuliani when Rudy when really Rudy Giuliani was America's mayor, and now yeah. he's America's asshole? I really, uh, you know, I like Rudy Giuliani. Oh really? Yeah. Oh really? And, and what about know, him exactly? Do you like his wonderful legal expertise? Well, I, you know, I have a feeling that uh, what's happening is, is they're using this, uh, uh, they're trying to keep people off balance. I believe that that's uh, Trump's way of negotiating. But in the meantime, Trump is also getting ready to talk about denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. No, he's going to talk about denuclearization. Don't get ahead of yourself. That's a long way. Uh, he, uh, he says that may not even happen in the opening discussion. And by the way, did you hear what they've already discussed? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Remember this guy? What was his name? Uh, Saul? Or what was what was the guy's name who came over? His, oh, uh, his uh, best yeah, pal. Camp. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, do you know what they talked about in the uh, Oval Office? One of the things? Uh-huh. What? Uh, oh, uh, no. No. So you don't know. Well, he delivered a letter. Yeah, but also people who were there said that he proposed to Trump that the United States help pay for a gambling okay. casino in North Korea. And all I, I'm thinking of myself is none of them have any money. How are they going to gamble? I didn't hear that. I heard I heard them talk about the possibility that somebody needed to pay for Kim Jong Un's room. Oh, oh no, I I had that story on my little newscast today. Uh, that that the but Pyongyang never pays for anything, so the United States is probably going to have to pony up the money for very expensive hotel rooms in Singapore, which is one of the most expensive cities you'll ever visit. Can I, can I ask you, uh, when China opened up to the United States and the world, what what activity did they use to start that conversation? It was just Nixon went over. 
and uh, visited. And, huh? Bingo. No, Nixon. Bingo. Nixon went over. I believe. Right. Didn't, didn't didn't Nixon go? Did he make a trip to China? Yeah, yeah he, he, yes. he might have. But yes. who initially? Well, he might have. Well, Kissinger talked to them, but right. uh, but Nixon went over and, there, and after that, he started opening up. Uh, number one, he started opening up. up. Uh, the uh, the uh, 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 trade with the West. Also, he what happened in China concurrently was that, and I believe that I'm trying to remember who the uh, who the uh, prime minister was at the time, but he was the guy that brought capitalism to China. For and now, and so it was you're that ahead it, of it, huh? You know, getting ahead of it. It started with a ping pong game. Yeah, ping pong. And, and, and uh, that was arranged by Kissinger. So, you know, if, if, if a ping pong game can bring a power like China into, into the world, uh, even though we have some problems with them and, and we're trying to protect our intellectual properties, uh, the, the bottom line is China is, is, a, is, is, is normalized to the rest of the world and to us. And the same thing can happen Remember, they started with a ping pong game. The same thing can happen with some negotiations or some meetings, no matter how trite, no matter how limited they are. Oh, well, now you're now you're you're, you're low, just like he is lowering our expectations. No, I'm giving you realistic expectations. He feels that he can negotiate with North Korea like he negotiates a deal to build a building, and he can't. Well, so far. It hasn't worked for 70 years under the And it hasn't way. worked yet either. You're getting ahead of yourself, Phil. As a matter it's, of fact, as a matter of fact, who was the last uh, administration to have really good eight, ongoing... Eight, huh? 1983, I think. Uh, uh, had, uh, was, uh, was I don't know if it was uh, Bush or, I think or it was Clinton. president. I think it was Clinton. Under yeah. Clinton. Yeah, they had some meaningful talks. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know... You didn't have the president going, but you had envoys going and talking to each other. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, uh, Kim Jong-un, if what he wants is a casino, then we know what he's really after in this whole deal. Uh, I, You know, this could just be uh, uh, misinformation. Well, that, no, no, this is misinformation because it's logical since on the... Uh, the coast of uh, of North Korea, there's supposedly an area called the North Korean Riviera, if you can believe that. Um, and uh, they want to build casinos there, and they want to invite the world to come in and use it as a as a uh, as a recreational place. I think that's a good thing. That's a very good thing for them. And you watch when the whole thing's through, Mr. Big Deal is going to give North Korea a great deal. And you know what we're going to get out of it? Denuclearization. Something that's very similar to what we have with Iran. Uh, well, <laughs> and believe me, it's, it's going to be Iran 2.0. Well, I think that you're a naysayer, and uh, we'll, oh, we'll see. Oh, I'm a naysayer. We'll see what okay. happens. We'll it's see what happens. In no particular hurry, we'll see what happens. You know, when you buy a stock, take place on the 12th. You know, when you buy a stock, you usually go, you know, they say past, uh, you know how they say past, um, you know, whatever the word is, the phrase, when you buy a stock. But when you do look at a past stock, you look at no past reflection performance. On futures. And if you look at any Trump past performance, it's a lot of a lot of stop, start, stop, start, go backwards. This is going to happen in two weeks. I'm going to release this. You never hear about it. Never he heard lies, about it. lies, lies, lies. So how do you not be an naysayer? Yeah. Lies. All he does is lie. I think the last 500 days were uh, feature packed. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, he, he got yeah. he got a Supreme Court justice nominated. Woohoo! 500 days to do that. Good job, yeah. Trumpy. All right. I, yeah. Nothing's going to change Good your job. mind. He got one thing done. He Nothing to change your mind. I'm I'm happy with a no Trump zone, but uh, you know. Uh, we already have that in my newscast for the most part. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Jeff. I th I think we have to make a clear understanding about the Supreme Court. That's his job. It's kind of one of the jobs that. It's not that he made a choice. He has to do that. It's the and way the government took away from the black guy. It yeah. was his job too. If, if if he would have put in, if if Hillary was elected, 
Do you think it doesn't that they matter who he selected? He hmm? can select any asshole he wants. I understand. That's one thing he can do. I like okay. the assholes that he's selecting. Yeah, like Scaramucci. Great. Scaramucci. That's unexpected. That, I would call like, that well, totally, it's, it's a non-brainer for his. It's, yeah. it's what he did. It's what he expected. And it didn't take a lot of effort to do it. Okay? Now, my it. question to you, Phil, is what has the guy actually done for you? Okay, he pulled out of the Paris Accords. He, he cut off the... Uh, oh, he the did this for you? Man. He's asking what he did for you. What's he done for you? He sucked me off. You know, what do you mean, what has he done for me? What, what's he going to do for me? He's doing it for the country. I'm not... I, I'm you, not oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It pulled up from the Paris Accords, so what you're saying is that you like plastic in the oceans, huh? No, that's, that has nothing to do uh, with this. This is bullshit cl climate change. Oh, bullshit and, and climate change. Okay, yeah, there's no climate and, change. And what they're doing is that they're sucking the, the funds from America. It's just another uh, bullshit get-together. Prove get -together. to me that there's no climate change. I can tell you this pollution and and no that no we're no not no the no pollutants. no no but well, how do you how, uh, tell tell me the well, pollution right. doesn't help to cause climate change? I think the pollution uh, helps to uh, to and your science to degree is and your but I think it's yeah. cyclical. And your science degree is from where? Uh, yeah, reef finders. <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, I, I'm actually a, uh, a volunteer now. Uh, I'm going to be getting training on uh, doing fish counts on reefs uh, to see uh, the, the health of reefs. Wait a minute. What do you do? Do you well, sit there and go one, two, three? Yeah, one hand two, that can count three? all of them. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I, I'm I'm happy with the things that he's done, and these are counter to the what you would be happy with. You don't want him to pull out of that. I believe that there's other ways that you can uh, that you can clean the world up besides just paying money to a bunch of uh, uh, aristocrats sitting in Paris. Do you want to know how 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 Trump's uh, uh, commitments work and how his decisions work? Let me give you two examples, and please be quiet while I give you these examples. Example was number one that he wrote a letter to North Korea blasting them before yeah. there was ever any sign that they were going to break off the talks. He did it because it was a face-saving thing because if North Korea cut off the talks, he then had already sent that letter. Wait a minute, let me finish. There's no, there's no need for that. The same kind of thing is what happened with the, uh, what is it, the Washington football team, the Vikings. Am I right? The Washington Vikings? Did I get it right? No, Red what? Redskins. No, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, okay. Philadelphia Eagles. I, hey, I got an Emmy. I'm close. Okay? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Not in one place. Anyway, the Philadelphia Explain Eagles. 100 miles. What's the difference? There was an indication that there were going to be some people who were not going to show up from the team and that they were going to boycott going to the White oh. House because, among other things, they felt that saying that football players who don't stand for the national anthem or whatever should be deported. He actually said that, okay? And so they felt that they were being assailed as football players and a lot of them didn't want to go. And he preempted it to save his ass and said, I'm disinviting them. Yeah, because no, he didn't, he didn't disinvite them. They weren't coming, okay? Yeah. He canceled it because he was afraid of what the picture would have looked like. Well, secondly, secondly, and this is the most important factor of all, he writes a tweet about how, you know, they didn't stand for the national anthem and now they won't come, you know, I'm going to, you know, they, they never, they never took the knee, that team, right. never took the knee during the national anthem. And yet he portrayed them as having taken the knee. And in fact, Fox who is yep. now being yelled and screamed at for this, showed a shot of members of that team taking the knee. But it was really them on the sideline waiting to go in during a game, and somehow they played the national anthem over it. It was well, they, they were They were praying before the game. Oh, yeah, I see. That they don't get their head bashed in. Oh, right. okay, or whatever. But they yeah, used that well, shot and said, see, they, they took the knee during the, and, and it wasn't true. 
And that's what he was watching, where he got the idea that they took the knee during the national anthem. Okay, you want me to answer uh, in the order uh, received? Sure, go ahead. All right. Uh, your, your first issue with the letter to North Korea. North Korea uh, had made some very blustery statements. No, wait a minute. After? After? Why before did, the letter. No, after? About John Bolton? Uh, after Bolton said... Right. Okay. So. John okay. Bolton, so they didn't start it. Bolton started it. Uh, and you took what Bolton said out of context. No, we because didn't take what Bolton said out of context. He said we may have to deal with this like we dealt with Libya. Uh, yes. Uh, and 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 if you listen to what Bolton said, he didn't say that he. Was I don't going care to, what he said or didn't say. Uh, it wasn't taken. Wait a minute. It wasn't. It wasn't taken right. It wasn't truth. taken right by North Korea. It was not good diplomacy. Look, it was the truth is you can't accept the truth because it had nothing to do with the way they took it. And they continued with this blustery statement. And what Trump did was he hit him back. No, he what he did is he preempted what he thought was going to be them backing out. No, oh, well, you can't back, back out. I backed out before you. Hey, how could you how could you put yourself we, in Trump's head? We don't head? have a mature. I can put myself in Trump's head. I think like a child and I'm in Trump's head. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and, and you hear like a child because you only hear what you want to hear. Isn't it funny how we all don't believe? We, the, I mean, it's we all live different realities. We it's Phil's in his own reality, and then us on the other side, we're in our own reality, and it, it's amazing. It really is. You think you think what we think are the facts, you think are lies, and what you think are the facts, we think are lies. That's how, right up is that it's not fucked up it's just uh, i don't mean it from your perspectives necessarily i'm saying from the country's perspective we we what what the republicans what the what the conservatives believe are facts what we see and then of course fox does something stupid like they did today by running the pic the uh video of the guys kneeling before a game praying saying that they were taking a knee during the anthem right so they perpetuate it did they apologize? Yeah, they apologize. They, they put on air or in a tweet. Uh, that's a good question. Did they, did they show the people? Oh, we we lied to you earlier. We're sorry. Know. We they, made a mistake. They, but the no, they just probably put out a little blurb. Okay. We, we, we. Now the, it was the, now, the, the right wing, the left wing media makes plenty of mistakes, and uh, you know, do they retract them? Give me yes. one. Yes. yes. Because I see CNN right. do it all the time. I also see CNN. Say, stating specifically when there's a conflict of interest, like uh, th they're a uh, you know full disclosure, and then they'll make a statement about whatever it may be, depending upon what the story is. Yeah, I never, yeah. you know, I, 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 you know, you hear about Fox all the time getting their foot put in their mouth because they they uh, they look for fake shit. Well, you see, I hear the same thing about CNN. And MSNBC. Actually, of all of them, CNN is about the most neutral. Uh, MSNBC, I'm thoroughly disgusted with because of their bias. Now, the bias is in my direction, but unfortunately, the bias is so badly handled and so, so blatant that, you know, that I, uh, I, I just find it hard to watch MSNBC for that reason. Yeah, they cancel. Fox and MSNBC can cancel each other out. Yeah. Neither of them have any real credibility, so far as I'm concerned. On the other hand, CNN seems to try and be even-handed. Uh, well, you're going to see it is heavy-handed on the, on the left, and that's by the pundits, not by the news stories that they report. Like, when something happens that they don't want you to know about on Fox, they just make it a headline. They don't cover live shit going on. Last summer, when Comey was in front of the the congress they didn't cover it live what kind of crap is that that's fucking news oh, right right how do you not cover that live but on the other hand i i, I saw the other day i think that uh, trump was somewhere giving a speech and fox covered it but msnbc didn't you know so that's just as cnn you know. covers everything well they, 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 they well they they cover everything because that way they get a lot of free programming 
You know, why do we That's why true. do we have Sarah Huckabee? Uh, wait a minute, the words choke in my mouth. It's Huckabee San, <laughs> Sanders. Why do we have a press conference every day on the air? We, there was a time when we didn't even have cameras in there. They yeah. serve food. No, they I don't. think it's because it's a circus and it gets ratings. Yeah, but I mean, I, you, there was a time when the White House did not have televised press conferences. They had the press come in, the press wrote what they said, but they were never televised and they never had cameras in there. Yeah, and now well, every it's, day it's, it's like this uh, the Sarah Huckabee Sanders show. Well, yeah. because they want to see what kind of how they're gonna, you know, she she like today she tried to say I think it was today or I saw the video clip of it today it could have been yesterday where she had to say that she was an honest person because she keeps asking yeah. they keep asking her questions like so what about what you told us and she won't answer well, it other I than have, to say well I, I have a new possible career for her. Uh, uh, the uh, Miss America contest has changed how they're going to do the Miss America contest <laughs> in that they're not going to, they're going to uh, feature brains no, over beauty. Yeah, no more okay. swimsuits. No more swimsuits and, uh, you, you know, uh, you might have some fat ones, you might have some really skinny ones, uh, but they're, they're going to, it's going to be magnanimous because, uh, 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 what her name, Carlson, what's her name, uh, uh, Gretchen. Gretchen Carlson is now the head of the Miss America pageant, and they're going to make it very me too, okay? And I think Sarah Huckabee Ch Sanders has a good shot at being the next Miss America. So, you know, I... <laughs> well, let me... I, I don't uh, think we need to change the subject, but uh, did you hear today yeah. that the Social Security and Medicare... Uh -huh. uh, Dipping into their reserves, and they'll and uh, mm -hmm. Medicare will be out of money by the uh, 2026, mm -hmm. and Social Security by 2034. Yeah, you know why? 2000. You know why? You know. You know why? 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 Come on, come on. Uh, and, and they're saying that uh, 55 year olds at this point yeah. should expect uh, uh, to no. take a no, no, 20 percent no. yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But come on, come on. Why, why is Social Security in trouble? Why is Medicare in trouble? Come on. Because there's not enough. No, uh, because the Congress stole money from the Social Security Administration to pay for the war in the Mideast. Hey, what the situation That's is. That's the reason. The money was stolen and it was never given back. It was never what? given back. It doesn't matter what they used it for. What they do you mean it doesn't matter what they used it for? It was my money. I put well, it in there, and my bosses put that money in there to take care of me in my old age, okay? And the same thing goes house. for Medicare, wait, and wait, you wait, do wait, not wait, have wait, the wait. right to use that money and to appropriate that that's, money without returning it. That's, that's water right. under the bridge. What do you mean it's no, water no, under no, the bridge? It's it money we're what, owed. It, you, you're fucking, missing the point. The fucking government should throw in about several trillion dollars back Where into get that. it from? You're going to write them a check? Well, then hey, don't take it from us. Don't take it from it's, our our. Uh, what are you going to take it from the North Koreans from their winning? You don't the take it. You the military. They need to take it from the military. The military. Look, what the situation is? From the military. Is we don't that, need them. Is the, the earners are paying in less for the first time since 1983. Right. Uh, so there's less uh, earners mm, wait and, and a minute. the amount wait, of money. Why are there less earners? Yeah. How Explain could that be? to me. If, so, if so, Trump uh, is doing so much for the economy, why are there less earners? That doesn't seem to make sense. Because baby boomers are retiring. Oh, I see. So there are less earners because there are less people working, yet the unemployment rate has gone down? Well... The Maybe is, it could be they're not getting paid what they used to get paid, and that's why that much money isn't being put in. But you see, it only goes to a maximum of what, one hundred eleven thousand or one hundred twelve thousand. Yeah, but some people, so if you're, matter. if you, but if you're making thirty five thousand dollars a year, you're never going to hit that max. I understand. The, the only the issue is that this is the what I'm bringing up is that this is the first time since 1983. Uh, that uh, that they're paying out more than they're taking in, so they're having to go to the but reserves. You're, you're 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 missing now, some of the major reasons why, and we have not not accounted it, it's, for that. It's reality now. 
Don't uh, you know? Yeah. You know? So how do I, we fix it? I know how we'll how fix, we fix it. it. I know how we'll fix That's it. a good question. How would you fix it? The Republicans I would raise will be the out of Wait a minute. Raise the top. R uh, Rob That's was talking. rich. The Republicans are going to be out of power, even if there is a Republican Party or it's going to be called the Trump Party, whatever. It'll be out of power, and the Democrats will fix it. I voted today. Uh, you know, we uh, we voted for governor. Uh, uh, or, or, uh, I, I, yeah, I guess we're voting for governor. We voted uh, for uh, U.S. senator. Uh, I, I voted for a number of things. Um, and uh, I don't think the Democrats are going to get into power. I don't think this blue wave is going to be as strong as you think it is, because if you look at New Jersey, which is a pretty blue state, and uh, you uh, look at what the Democratic turnout was today, it was abysmal. Well, then how come, how come Menendez got uh, reelected? Menendez, Menendez is on his third term. Then the guy that they put up against him uh, you know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But, but uh, you you can't you can't do better than going against a guy who had criminal indictments against him oh. and and had to go on trial. Everybody that should be a walk Jersey. in the fucking park. Alex, everybody in New Jersey has criminal indictments against them. What? Why do you think they invented New Jersey <laughs> so that the mafia could move over there? <laughs> I happen to have many loved ones in New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and uh, are are all of them wearing ankle bracelets? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they'll be in, they'll be next to J uh, Trump in prison. Yeah. So uh, anyway, what all I'm saying is is that the amount of blue turnout in New Jersey and there was two other states so far that have reported had been very very low, and when there's low uh, Democratic turnout. It, it means that it's, it's a little bit better for the Republicans because there aren't as many Republicans as there are Democrats. These are primaries, so it doesn't fucking matter either way. Uh, it doesn't yes, it matter. Does. It's, what? It's the Democrats vote for Democrats, it doesn't matter. When it comes to Republicans and Democrats, it might matter a little bit. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see. If they don't turn out for we'll the primary. what happens. Yeah, we'll a lot of people don't vote well, for Well, uh, the polls are closed in California now, so uh, yeah, we should start seeing some results. You know. Uh, Feinstein had a field of people running against her, but you know what? I didn't recognize one name uh, that was running against her. There must have been 30 names on I, that ballot. I, I really admire her for her bravery. I just think she doesn't want to be unemployed. Yeah, I, no, I, I admire... Diane Feinstein's bravery. She's not wearing a scarf anymore. She got it fixed. What was that? She, she had a she scarf. She always used to wear scarves because she uh -huh. had like turkey neck. You know. I think she had it fixed. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, she's not wearing a scarf. But it, the, the scarf is not a big deal. I don't care whether she wears well, a you scarf. Know, you know, wear when you tell a joke, you wonder why we don't get it. It's yeah, the same okay. reason why you don't get the jokes we tell you. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, well, diagram it next time. Yeah. <laughs> you know. uh, Apparently, anyway. we have to diagram everything for you, Phil, because you're seeing an administration. We're a banana fucking republic. We are living with a guy who, who, who thinks he has dictatorial powers. Uh, well, what we have is a bunch of people that don't want to support our leader. Oh, yeah, yeah. What leader? Well, oh, the Supreme oh, Leader. And by the way, where's Mel Jones. Melania finally showed up, but they wouldn't let the press in to take pictures of her. Yeah. What is wrong with Melania? She's got a titch up? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, no, she got a boob job when she married Donald. Uh, <laughs> So any, anyway, yeah, you, you, we're never going to see eye to eye on this. I see the good in things. You, you know, some people see the, the glass half oh, Okay, full. okay. Uh, tell me, the, see, okay, uh, since you see the good in things, tell me some of the good things about Hitler. Well, he invented the Volkswagen. He employed a lot of people, a lot of Jews. He employed a lot of Jews. ran on time. Yeah, he, uh, he's, you know, the economy, uh, the unemployment rate went down under Hitler. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. Yeah, Mussolini. The tra no, the trains ran on time with Mussolini. That wasn't well, Hitler that made the trains run on time. 
you know, when you said, tell me a good thing about Hitler, uh, when I filled out the ballots last night. You, you, you wrote in Hitler? Well, I told Faye, I, I, because I filled out hers, uh, I said, uh, don't worry, I voted for Hitler. <laughs> and she says, no, you didn't. You know, because I, I vote. You, well, you, I had both ballots. I, I just filled them out the same. You took vote? That's illegal. Well, she signed the envelope. You know, tell tell it to Trump. Uh, you know, Hillary did it all the time. Three million or five million. Okay, uh, but, let's uh, change let's change the subject from uh, from. Uh, I tried from, to from <laughs> from Trump uh, to yeah, another to, to, to another president, uh, Clinton. Uh, did oh, anybody yeah. hear the interview with Clinton? Me too. He's a victim. Yeah. yeah. He's a victim. Well, I mean, but, but did anybody see the interview at all? Uh, I saw the clips. Yeah, I saw the I saw the major part of the interview where uh, the the uh, black guy who was interviewing what's his name I can't remember his name now. Uh, you know, asked him because he's out pushing a book. He and James Patterson is that the uh, author? Uh, uh, the, the mystery writer uh, have written a book together called The President is Missing and uh, they're out pushing this book but okay. whenever they sit down with some journalist or some TV person to interview flacking the book they don't even want to talk to Patterson they don't want to talk about the book uh, they just want to ask him all about Monica Lewinsky <laughs> How he feels about the Me Too movement, and unfortunately, I always thought that Bill was slicker than shit. Okay, that he could kind of slide past anything. And he was good. huh? Yeah. Was well, he's lost. He's lost his ability because in I, this interview, he came out looking so fucking bad. It was ridiculous. Didn't he say, Alex? Didn't he say that he was a victim? No, no, that's the way people have interpreted it. What he said was, he said, uh, uh, the guy said, well, a lot of people feel you, you got away with it, you know. And he said, I didn't get away with anything. He said, I paid a big price for that. And on top of that, when I left the White House, I was $16 million in debt because of it. Did he say he was raped? No. I no. thought I, I oh, thought he said. Where'd you he hear was... that on Fox? Uh, uh, no, I don't know where I got it. No, no, I, no. I he never it. said that. He never uh, said that. But he, what he did say, what he did say to the the interviewer was, he says, you know, you should go back. You you don't remember everything that went on and all the complexities of the situation. He said, and then he said, well, have you apologized to Monica Lewinsky? And he said, and he said, yes, I made a public apology and included Monica Lewinsky in that public apology and then he said but have you called her to apologize and he said no and uh why not he said i apologized you know it was a public apology everybody heard it including you know monica Lewinsky, obviously um but people are on his case because they're saying well you know he's like uh uh, uh well, Slick Willie. That he's trying no, that he's trying he's trying to get away with stuff here and he's trying to make himself the victim and so on. I gotta tell you something. Gotta remember that he was a middle aged guy who was being pursued, and she even admits it, pursued by this just barely out of her teens girl. All right? Uh, I don't know about you, but when I was in my middle years uh, and I was single, I didn't give a shit how old somebody was. If they pursued me, here I am, you're, you know. You're available. I, I mean, he was, he, and he was very vulnerable in that respect. I mean, he was, she was pursuing him. She was beguiling him. She was seducing him. And, um, uh, you know, I don't exactly see Monica Lewinsky as a victim. I see her as a victim of her own actions and the actions of a, of an older man who should have known better. Right. All right. But um, uh, this whole idea of making her a celebrant in the Me Too movement, 
it doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me because at no point did anybody ever say that they were raped in that situation. At no point did they say that he forced this whole thing on her. Uh, it just happened because she wanted it to. And because she was beguiled by the guy. I mean, uh, he was a very good-looking, very seductive guy. He had a very seductive quality about him. And so this young girl, and, you know, she was a girl. She was... she. She still didn't have the brain she's got today, you know. So, I mean, but anyway, everybody's been getting on his case over this. And um, I was just wondering what, if you, any of you saw it and what you thought about it. But apparently none of you saw it, so there's nothing you can think about it. Have you seen any of the clips of it? I, I, I saw the clips. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm just not that impressed with the whole thing anymore. It's kind of old stories I, I'm, I'm curious did you ever uh, know her before she was working for Clinton did you knew I, her father stepfather did I ever know her yeah. no no did you ever meet her? no oh no 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 I mean begin with, no no I worked for her stepfather yeah I know that That's our Peter Strauss I mean he wasn't her stepfather when I worked for him and he wasn't her stepfather I think well no she was he was her stepfather when uh, when when the whole Clinton thing went down, was she even born when you worked for uh, WMCA? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. I mean, uh, uh, he had a wife uh, at the time, and she died, I believe, is what happened. Uh, and if she didn't die, somebody killed her because uh, she was not a nice woman. Uh, and uh, she, oh, it was one of those one of those what we would call high society marriages. Our Peter, uh, our Peter Strauss's father was very famous in, in New York because it was the Strauss family, which was... Uh, Abraham and Strauss. Uh, no, 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 wrong. Yeah, they're the apartment store. No, they were Macy's. This oh, Strauss was Macy's. They also owned Abraham and Strauss. No, no, that may have been earlier on and another Strauss, but not... He was... His father was Macy's. Uh, now they're all part of federated department stores. Well, we don't right. care about that. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Oh, but they, they were a conglomerate for a long time. No, they, they were, at one time, they were one store over there in Herald Square. Yeah. Okay, and then when I was and growing up, they had, came to San Francisco in about the early 50s. Uh, yeah. And that's when they started putting Macy's in other cities. But the point was, you're getting me off the track here. He was Strauss of Macy's, and she was Salzburger of the New York Times. And so it was like one of these royal weddings, you know, the two came together. But in working for them, I got to say that neither of them had a sense of what the common people were into. Now, his father uh, owned the radio station, uh, WMCA, and his father did some great work. He was the first guy ever to do editorials on radio, you know, and uh, he, was, he was very well known. Uh, now, the, and and, the, and the, son, the, the, the son took over the station when he died. What? Did the father hire Ruth Meyer, who started the good guys? Uh, that I don't know. I, that may, may have been. I, don't, I really don't know. I, was, I don't know when the father died exactly. I'd have to look that up. However, when I got fired, it became such a cause celebre that this, uh, this guy, had uh, R. Peter Strauss, had fired this broadcasting um what can we call Giant. it broadcast no not no uh this broadcasting uh liberal this broadcasting uh speaker of truth and blah, blah 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 it got over to israel and there was a town there called straussville that was named after r peter strauss's father because of his contributions to israel they were going to drop the name because of what happened to me in new york city you were going to change it to Bennettville. You were going to change it to Bennettville. Yeah, right. No, but they were going to. But uh, it was he. It was like a royal family. The, the New York Times uh, daughter, Salzberger, marries uh, Strauss. Wow, you know. But they never had any. They never knew what the common people were. They never had any idea of it. They grew up in this cloistered, rich life, uh, and didn't know better. You know, and neither of them were as good as their parents were, or as principled as their parents were. So, 
Anyway, I just thought I'd tell that story. That's, yeah, I never told that part of the story, did you I? You know, you hear that over and over again. What? Uh, the, the same kind of story about the, the parents who were, who were self-made, I guess. Like, I, I'm trying to think of the radio company I worked for that was uh, Long Island. They, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it was family run mm -hmm. for many, many years. Yeah. Then the kids took over. By the time the kids had grown up, now these were wealthy people. And the, and, and the kids, everybody said it, that when the father stepped down, the kids just did not understand how to run the business. They were He was an MBA, and he knew nothing about radio, and he treated the employee. The, the, it was like a family atmosphere until the kids took over, and then it went down. You know, they, he eventually sold it for a boatload of money to one of the, the conglomerates. But, uh, you know, that same kind of story about, you know, the older guy being more of a of a you know a normal person and the kids being all uppity yeah yeah uh, that happens you know yeah. that happens unfortunately hello john perulis how are you hi hi everybody yeah have you been i was gonna get on this show early but i forgot i had to go out and get gas i get safeway gas here because if you shop at Safeway, you get a discount. So I spent uh, three thirty-nine a gallon for gas, and I got a big truck, so it makes a lot of sense to do that. So that's why I'm coming in late tonight. God, am I glad I don't own a car? I don't even know if I know how to drive a car anymore. Like we're thinking of <laughs> oh, it'll come back. We're, to you. we're thinking of renting a car uh, this summer because we go up to uh, Vermont, and I decided this year that we're going to take uh, we're going to rent it for a week and then after we leave our friends after three days we're going to travel all up into new england and so on and oh know, it's a beautiful ha time have a nice yeah. time in october very beautiful time of the year for it and um uh because here's the reason why i'm going to do that if i rent the car to drive up there for four days it's going to cost me about 750 dollars but if i rent it for seven days it's 300 yeah. <laughs> so so I'm just going to rent it for seven days and just dr take a little extra vacation. Yes, Phil. Okay. Uh, Abraham and Strauss. In 1893, the Wechsler's share of the company yes. was bought the Strauss yeah, family. Yes, but that's not. Owned, listen, listen to me. That's also, not the father. That's not the father of our Peter Strauss. That's the grandfather. Okay, that's the one. Strauss. That's the one that died on the Titanic. Uh, well, and uh, they also own shares in Macy's, and yes, uh, then the store became go. known as Abraham and Strauss, or A and S. During 1910, the Strauss family separated their interest in two stores. And what happened to Strauss? And going to one branch of the family, Macy's, to the other. So yeah. when the family split, yeah. one one half. Yes, but that has nothing to do with Abraham and Strauss, with the Strauss I was talking about. Well, it was a relative. No, they were the Macy's side. Now, what did it say happened to the old man, Grandfather Strauss? Uh, uh, they're talking, I'm, I looked up the Abraham and Strauss department store, which oh, is bank. Oh, oh, I see. Well, if you were to look at Wikipedia, you'd find the, he, he and his wife died on the Titanic. All right. Yeah. So, who inherited? You know how they, you know how they in every movie of the Titanic, they always have the, the couple who he says, okay, go in the boat. No, I'm staying with you, and they're old yeah. people. That's supposed to be the Strausses. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All but, right. And I, oh, and, I, and I always used to say, you know, if the, he just had somehow gotten in the boat with her, uh, or didn't, <laughs> or uh, rather, if he just died earlier, that's what I was going to say, that we would never have to put up with this shit we're putting up with right now. But, you know. Well... Uh, oh, the other thing is, uh, you beat me up the other night about uh, not having uh, uh, independent business daily, uh, uh, writing that story about uh, Hillary and the DNC uh -huh. paying for the dossier. Well, I sent you uh, the Washington Post also printed that story, mm -hmm. and you didn't say anything about it. Uh, but I read the story uh, briefly, and I'm try it's, it, it so slipped my mind now that I can't remember. Yeah, what, you, what you were wrong. No, 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 I wasn't wrong. It, that wasn't what that article was saying at all. Again, no, you, you no, see what no, you want to no, see. No, I, you, 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 you obviously took away from that story a different story than I did. 
You know, oh, yeah. it, it didn't say that the Democrats paid for it. They said it was paid for. I can't remember who it was paid for. And then the Democrats, it was funneled over to the Democrats to use. Uh, here, I'll find Oh, don't. It. Just stop it, Phil. <laughs> I, you know, we can't spend a whole hour with you researching all the mistakes you make. If we no, did that, it, we, should ju- we should just do the Phil Meyer show. And you can yeah. go on for an hour every night and look up all your mistakes and try to correct them. All right. Uh, so can can I bring all my ex Greenpeace buddies uh, to harass you uh, when you have your, the Phil Meyer show? It won't be a Phil Meyer show. But you can bring your Greenpeace buddies. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, you've been rather quiet. What are you thinking about all of this? I think he fell asleep. No. <laughs> What's that? What are you thinking about all of this? Uh, I believe it. You heard me. I've uh, opened my mouth. I got uh, pretty vocal about the. <clears throat> fucked up state that our media is in and uh, how none of us hear the same facts and you know i i don't well we hear we hear the facts from the source that feeds us the facts we want to hear well there that's <laughs> yeah. you know that's mm. the problem with america today uh yes jeff i remember today something that happened 50 years ago for me. Well, Bobby Kennedy got killed. That's exactly what I, re- I remember. Oh, really? And it was also happens to be the same day I graduated uh, from college and became an engineer. Wow. And it was a sad day, you know, for him. Yeah. I was traumatized. For the country. What, what, were, you, what were you saying, uh, Rob? I was completely traumatized by it yeah. as a kid. I was a kid and um, I was 11. And somehow it really, really fucked with me. Why did it fuck with you in particular? I mean, and you say you're only like 11. I don't, I felt unsafe yeah. as an 11 year old. I actually remember one day sitting, it was summertime, it was June. And it was one night after dinner and we were, my mother and I were sitting on our stoop mm-hmm. outside of our house. And I said to my mother, is it possible I'm having a nervous breakdown? I was that traumatized really? by it. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, that's what the nation was when his brother, John, was killed. Uh, yeah. last All I cared about then was that I couldn't watch my shows on Saturday. It happened on a yeah, Friday. Yeah, And yeah. there were no cartoons or anything. But at 11 years old, it, it Martin Luther King, two months later, right. Bobby, and I was really traumatized by it. I, yeah, I, I, was wasn't, I wasn't as traumatized because I was never a fan of Bobby Kennedy, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I didn't trust him because he worked for McCarthy. Uh, yeah. And he, if you ever look at the McCarthy hearings, look at who's sitting over to the left of McCarthy. Uh, as, as one, and on to the right of him is Roy Cohn. And, and I never trusted that. Also, I never trusted the fact uh, that, that the, family, the father was one of the people that bankrolled McCarthy and the whole Red Scare. Um, so, uh, uh, you was know. Was Joe, Joe Kennedy? Yes, Joe, uh, Joe Kennedy. Well, well, he was a supporter of the Third okay. Reich, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but the point that I'm making is, is that he, uh, uh, you know, Bobby Kennedy, I never trusted him because of that. All right. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I... Uh, when he got so when he got shot, I you know I felt bad because what what are the chances of this happening, you know? Uh, it was a, those were crazy times. I mean, so many people were getting assassinated. I, I mean, Fred Hampton from the Black Panthers. Well, we, I mean, you know, in those days you know, we didn't have the kind of um, of uh, security. Uh, security that we have today. Today, yeah. I mean, we have so many you know metal detectors you have to go through and things like that. When you look at what Kennedy was doing. Jack Kennedy was doing in Dallas that day. You'll never see a president ever do that again. A convertible, oh, yeah. a convertible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was a even go in a non-protected car. Yeah, I was a kid. John Kennedy uh, went on a motorcade past us on Hempstead Turnpike. And <laughs> I'll never forget it. Open car. Open car. And, and, when, when I was a kid, uh, I used to hang out. Well, I grew up on Cape Cod, partly. And uh, Sundays, I used to hang out at the doorway, back doorway at St. Francis Roman Catholic Church in Hyannis. And Kennedy walked by me twice as a little kid. I thought I was looking at God. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, uh, did I was I ever in the presence of Kennedy? I don't think so, but I seem to remember it. And I no, I don't think so. No, that's uh, Trump. No, uh, no, I would have been able to tell the difference between Trump and Kennedy. Didn't you say you met him in an elevator? Who? Trump. Trump. No, I was at the um, you know the big uh, the big hotel, the Tower in Vegas. Uh, yeah. and we were doing a show from the top of that, and he was being shown around by the owners as we were doing our show. And I actually have a quick piece of video of him walking past the window. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's that's the closest I've ever come to Trump. But I like to be able to you know meet Trump and be able to shake him firmly by the throat. I wouldn't shake his hand if I had a chance to do that. I didn't say I was going to shake his hand. I'd probably give him the finger. Huh? No, we just walk right by him. I have. I would not. I'm not impressed. I, yeah. But you're supposed to be impressed. He's president of the United States. We're supposed to honor him. He is. He is. He is supposed to get respect now that he's president. Yeah, you have to earn it. You don't get it. Just yeah, because. you have to earn it, and he doesn't huh? think he has to earn it. Uh, hey, I, I, today I heard LeBron James, uh, you know, from the Cavaliers say something really cool. Oh, uh, the, they asked him if, uh, you know, if they if the Cavs won uh, the NBA tournament, oh, they said if they he'd would go to the, the White they, House. The more and than, he said no. More than yep. that, he has a deal with the head of the other team. What's the other team that's playing? Uh, the, the Golden State Warriors. Golden State Warriors. He, they yeah. have a deal that none of them will go. Neither right. team, yeah. neither team will yeah. go to the White House. And he will, you know, not be invited to anything that they have. You know? Yeah, that's good. I think that's unprecedented. I, I've never heard of that. Uh, uh, you know, a team refusing to meet. Well, with the I mean, president. these are people that the president has gone out of his way to disparage. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and to say they should be deported and all kinds of things like that. And well, so they're fair. supposed to think well of him. What? To be fair, he yeah. hasn't said that about the NBA players. No, he, he has the NFL players. Right. Right. But I suppose, you, they, do they play the national anthem at uh, basketball games? Yes. Yeah, they, they do. And yeah. they mandate that you have to stand for Hey, the, guys, the last they, one. What, what you have to stand uh, for? What? They mandate that the players stand for the national anthem. For it's, the it's, NBA? It's not like the NFL where now they say, well, if you don't want to stand, then you can go. And, and now what happens if, because uh, everybody's going to be looking now at the NFL, right? Oh, So the yeah, anthem that, is going to happen and everybody's going to be looking. And then you're going to have to say, well, I was in the club. I, I was, uh, it was only because I was getting some treatment at the last minute in the clubhouse, no, it, not because I didn't want to stand for it. And there's all this ambiguity, uh, ambiguity. And it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how many in the first football games this year, how many people come out of the locker room for the national anthem? Yeah, well, we'll they see. should all just stay in, inside. I think they will all make a deal with each other to either all hey. all go out or none of them none of them go out. You know. There was a really cool thing that happened on game two. I, I've been watching the Warriors. I'm going to be gone tomorrow night because tomorrow's game three. I got to I got to watch that. But on game two, Carlos Santana and his wife played the national anthem she on the drums he on the guitar it was one of the most incredible uh renditions of the national anthem i ever heard and it's it sort of reminiscent of woodstock i mean we talk about woodstock a lot you know Jimi hendrix just floored everybody with his version of the star spangled banner and carlos did a, a bang up job if you if you not a big somehow, fan not a big fan never have been actually uh, he was at Woodstock. Good. Yeah, I know he's, he was at Woodstock. You listen to him play. He's 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 a great. No, guitarist. I know he's a great oh, guitarist, yeah. but yeah. there's something about his playing that I don't like. You know, that it does not. Yeah, well, register okay. with me. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, no, he was at Woodstock. You're very good, very good, Phil. You're up on your history. Everybody, you don't, can't have a drink. You can't have a drink. He was it right. Was, hey, uh, Alex, I, I caught uh, Will Durst on the first part of your show. Yeah. And Durst is start. I like the long hair and everything. He's starting to look like a wizard from, uh, you know, the Game of Thrones or something. You know, I mean, yeah. that's pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Well, how about Scott? How about Scott? If he lets his hair down, he looks like uh, it's a Van Dyke. It's uh, what, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. So uh, whatever. Uh, hey, let me put on the theme there. 
Um, but uh, this has been a fun show, interesting show. A gasser, as they would say in Frank Sinatra parlance. Hey, Rob, love to see you more often when you can do it, you know, and uh, because you're terrific. And uh, uh, in fact, if you want to do the show when I'm on vacation, you're welcome to. <laughs> wow. Hey, that's cool. Uh, 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 Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, John, I know that you were late tonight, but that's okay. You know, you got here. Scott, thank you for all your yelling and screaming. I think you hit high C above C at one point there, if I'm not mistaken. And, of course, thank you very much, Phil. Uh, would all of you give a nice big wave goodbye to the audience out there? That's our Citizens Panel. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, that's me for tonight. Uh, next is Jack and Amy. They're going to do a thing called uh, the uh, Intersection. And that's followed at 1 o'clock in the morning by Connections, which you really should listen to. It's really a very, very good show. Um, meanwhile, uh, I'm going to see you again tomorrow. Uh, same time, uh, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>